Bud Light has suffered a monumental fall from grace. This follows backlash from the Dylan Mulvaney saga earlier this year. Bud Light was once America's favourite beer, but after its woke rebrand, sales fell 25.7%, profit dropped over 30%, and its ranking has plummeted from number one to number four, as well as suffering irreversible reputational damage. With the bottom line being affected, management is in crisis mode, aggressively changing course and releasing new marketing material that gets back to their great American roots. But has the damage already been done? Will American beer drinkers see this as a desperate attempt to claw back financial losses, or will they forgive and forget? Sky News All-Stars Megan Kelly, Rowan Dean and Paul Murray take a look. Bud Light made a huge mistake in appointing trans activist Dylan Mulvaney to be their ambassador in April of this year. And since then, things have gone from bad to worse for the company. This follows the latest update on Bud Light, with Anheuser-Busch reportedly the parent company losing $27 billion in market value thanks to its attempt to force transgender ideology onto America's beer-drinking men and women. And what's worse, they've alienated their fiercely loyal customer base. I'm a firm believer that you, the individual, have some autonomy in this game. And when people say, okay, that company, you know, they've gone woke, they're promoting trans ideology or whatever it might be, in this case, it was because of this influencer, Dylan Mulvaney, uh, who supposedly is trans or whatever it might be, it's like, okay, you don't like your own audience, you don't like the frat guys who drink Bud Light, we're just not gonna drink it anymore. And Bud Light, I mean, they really destroyed the brand, and I'm telling you, man, this one's gonna stick. It's embarrassing uh, to go and, you know, get Bud Light at a bar or at a party or wherever anymore. Once the financial losses started to hit, the company distanced themselves from the people behind the Dylan Mulvaney stunt. And representation is at sort of the heart of evolution. You've got to see people who reflect you in the work. And we had this hangover. I mean, Bud Light had been kind of a brand of fratty, kind of out of touch humor. And it was really important that we had another approach. That is the performance artist of Dylan Mulvaney. We now learn that uh, there's more problems, not just for Bud Light, who people are not buying. They're not going back to it. They have found the alternatives when it comes to their beer of choice. But the ad agency responsible for, uh, well, further empowering the performance artist is in even more trouble now. The reports are that they are in an all-out panic. And why wouldn't they be? They've made a legendary mistake. They now have made this brand, rather than more sellable, they have made it a laughing stock. To be caught with a can of Bud Light in America now is like being caught with your pants down. You look like a fool. Everyone will laugh at you. You're not in on the joke. You've made yourself a national humiliation just by selecting the wrong beer can. And for those who have been living under a rock and haven't yet been told what's happened to that brand and what it now means, they're about to find out the hard way. It's going, they're gonna be the butt of a lot of jokes just by ordering a beer that used to be symbolic of middle America. Management then released a series of ads clearly attempting to distract from the saga. Woke Bud Light has now tried to clean up its act. You're not gonna believe this one. In the most cynical move I've seen since Hillary Clinton claimed she never left home without a bottle of Tabasco in her purse, Bud Light is now trying to hide behind veterans and the flag. That's right, they're running a special limited edition Bud Light featuring a very worthwhile charity, Folds of Honor, which helps give scholarships to family members of wounded and deceased veterans. But as if to underline the point, their aluminum bottles will also now feature sport hunting camouflage. In other words, Bud Light is pandering to the very people they hate, but who they need to buy their beer. But it didn't work. An experiment that gave away free beer didn't even entice drinkers as they were so embarrassed to be seen with a Bud Light in hand. It's 6.45. Experiment here. 
There appear to be three different types of beer in this cooler. Franklin, Tennessee. Yingling. Ultra. Oh, yeah. And Bun Light. The only beer left at the West Fest VIP, whatever you want to call it, event, Bun Light. Not ideal. And it's not only conservatives that are abandoning Bud Light. The LGBTQIA plus community are also furious with the brand. Meanwhile, proving that once you start making people angry, it's pretty hard to stop. The progressive left gay community is now furious at Bud for trying to claw back its rapidly disappearing customer base. This headline, Bud Light tries to appease fragile bigots with camouflage redesign amid Dylan Mulvaney row, in the progressive gay site picknews.com pretty much says it all. Despite all the money and publicity Bud Light gave her, Dylan Mulvaney is now turning on the brand as well. Dylan Mulvaney's actually mad at Bud Light. Dylan Mulvaney has ruined Bud Light uh, through this partnership. And it, look, it wasn't Dylan's responsibility to see the harm coming, but once it did come, Dylan should have been thankful that Bud Light did not kick Dylan underneath the bus, kick Dylan under and then run the bus back and forward over Dylan. That's not what they did. They just went silent. Dylan should be thanking them for that. That's, that's, I mean, th my side of this issue, I presume your side of this issue, wanted Bud Light to come out and say, we're sorry. We're sorry we partnered with Dylan. We misjudged our audience. At the same time, we were calling them too fratty. We partnered with not just a trans person. That's one thing. But one of the most offensive trans people we've seen in the public eye. And Bud Light's latest attempt to win back their customers has again fallen flat, despite being anti-woke, with commentators calling the new ad campaign desperate and cringy. Sky News All-Star Megan Kelly agrees, slamming Bud Light for their latest attempt to woo back customers. Bud Light has lower sales than they've had. It's, they've lost 50% of their sales year over year, Paul. 50% and they still don't know how to solve it. They put out a commercial of a bunch of guys grunting when they sit down in their chairs. So now it's like their way of saying like, we understand and we love the fratty men. This is what they're like. <sighs> Um, <laughs> yes, again, no man I know is that way. This is not going to woo anybody back in your camp. They can't figure out how to stop the bleeding. Even the heir to Bud Light's parent company, Anheuser-Busch, is embarrassed by the entire saga and cleanup attempt. Now, the backlash was extraordinary, but it seems to not just be loyal consumers of the beer that aren't happy. Because the heir to the Anheuser-Busch family, being the parent company of Bud Light, has given a pretty scathing statement to TMZ. Billy Bush joined TMZ live podcast with Harvey Levin and weighed in on all the scandals surrounding the failed marketing attempt. He said, I think my family, my ancestors would, are rolling over in their graves. They were very patriotic. They loved this country and what it stood for. They love this country because it is a free country and people are allowed to do what they want. But it was never meant to be on a beer can and never meant to be pushed in people's faces. So they would have, they would have never marketed their brands that way. As you know, AB was one of the greatest marketers ever in any business, and they were incredible with what they came out with. The Clydesdales, the frogs, the lizards, all the different promotions they had, all the different advertising they had. And the last thing they would have done was get as controversial as InBev has with Dylan Mulvaney advertising. Despite the damage control, finances are still looking grim. Bud Light will need to play a long game of reputational rehabilitation if they're ever going to reclaim the title of America's favorite.